MCAT Fundamentals Lecture on Cars. Now, for starters, whenever we use cars, it's an abbreviation for critical analysis and reasoning skills, but that's quite a mouthful, so we'll just use cars for short. In this lecture, we're going to go into a brief overview of how to approach the car section of the MCAT. We'll start first with a discussion on how to approach the passages themselves. There are several disciplines covered on the MCAT, and a couple of them are listed below. Take note that almost any discipline is fair game for the MCAT. There are some test-taking tactics that are going to help you on test day. First off, don't speed read. You want to read each passage thoroughly. This is because speed reading actually does not have a substantial enough benefit. At most, you'll save yourself a few seconds, but you're going to be wasting time when you get to the questions and you have to go back and reread something that you could have just read the first time more thoroughly. So because of this, you want to generally make sure that you have a thorough understanding of the passage, even if it means reading slower than you would like. Also, try not to distract yourself by taking notes as you read. I would suggest that you do take notes, but I would suggest you would also do that at the end of each paragraph and at the end of the passage, not while you're reading. This is because it's very easy to lose track of what's going on in the passage itself if you're constantly taking notes after every sentence. You want to maintain a certain amount of continuity as you read. It's good, that you, it's good to pause and take notes periodically, but not simultaneously as you read. Another tip is to read the passage first instead of the questions. I know a lot of people say, read the questions and hunt for it in the passage, but in general, from a timing standpoint, that's going to take longer than reading the passage and answering the questions afterwards. If you read the question and realize that it requires a specific portion of the passage, you can go back, but you don't want to rely on that. Again, it takes way too much time. As you're reading the passage, you also want to concentrate on the main idea of the passage. This is the core concept, what the passage is trying to show, or prove, or to convey. This is the main point of the author, and something that you're going to have to develop the skill to find out. You also want to train yourself to be interested in every topic, and remove your outside bias. You will find passages that are not very interesting, and they're going to be boring at times. And you're going to have to be interested in it. This is because if you're interested in a subject, you are more likely to pay attention. If you're bored with it, or find it not that exciting, you're going to have a harder time focusing. Also, the MCAT likes to prey on outside biases. On this, on this portion in particular, you will find that there will be questions that are going to be taking information from outside of the passage. And although this information may be true, or cater to the biases you may take into the test, it's not going to be what the test is looking for in terms of answers. You also don't want to get lost in details. Passages will often have very long names, usually historical or from an economic standpoint, very long, arduous names and vocabulary. You don't want to take the time to go through this. You want to save yourself the brain space. Lastly, you want to create an image of the author. Who are they and what is their purpose? This is going to be helpful when it comes time to make inferences about their opinion later on. Is this author educated? What time period are they from? What kind of background does this person have? Is this person opinionated in any way? And what kind of profession does this person have? These are all things you might want to ask yourself as you read, because they will generally help you line up what this, path, what this author's opinion is when it comes time to answer questions. It's not imperative that you've taken a logics or philosophy class before you've taken the MCAT, but it is, it is good to have an understanding of some basic logics and arguments. For starters, a basic argument is simple. It, it, it brings out evidence which supports a claim, and it leads to a conclusion, which is the supported claim that the evidence points to. An inference, on the other hand, is an assumption which is accepted as true without proof, and it makes implications based on these assumptions. Implications, in short, are just conclusions that are drawn, but not explicitly stated. So, it's not, in, if you notice, inferences are not as specified or as concrete as a basic argument is. However, these are still things you're going to have to make when it comes time to answer questions. A refutation or an objection is a claim that weakens an argument. It makes, a conclusion, it makes the conclusion reached by the argument less likely to be true. A counterargument is when there is evidence to support the refutation itself. 
There are some tools for close reading, or as I like to call it, active reading. For starters, read for the author. We already talked about having a general image of who the author is and what they stand for. If you try to see this author's persona in his, in his or her work, you will oftentimes have a better idea of what their opinion is and what their main idea is. You also want to ask questions as you read. Why do they write this? Who's the author? What's their opinion? Why, why is this paragraph the way it is? Why do they provide this sort of information? What kind of argument are they presenting? And how sound is this argument? Are there any flaws in this argument? Are there any additional bits of information that you would like to see? And questions about transitions and word choices. You also want to identify purposes of each sentence and paragraph, which I already mentioned. Knowing why the passage is written the way it is and why it's structured the way it is is going to help you when it comes time to answer the questions. We've brought up the main idea quite a few times, but there's a lot of inference-based questions on the MCAT that are going to rely on the main idea. If you have no concept of the main idea, you're going to have a very difficult time answering the questions. For starters, write down a list of main topics. Make sure they're short though, because you don't have very much time. After each paragraph or so, you want to take time to maybe jot down a few notes about what the paragraph said and what the main ideas of these paragraphs were. You also want to relate them to each other briefly at the end, once you've re read the whole passage. Finally, link them all together and incorporate the author's opinion. This will give you the main idea. Now that we've gone into approaching the passages, let's go into what kinds of passages you're going to see on the MCAT. The first is a compare and contrast. These will present two related ideas, and they'll explore similarities and differences, like the picture below, apples and oranges. Occasionally, they'll present a third idea and test the relationship of the two ideas. So, going back to the apples and oranges analogy, if we were to bring up strawberries, we would try to see how strawberries relate to the two ideas. So you could say, hey, a strawberry is red, just like an apple. How does that affect the relationship between apples and oranges? Well, that means that the color of the two fruits is quite a distinction. So, oftentimes, you're going to see these compare and contrast introducing other ideas as well. But ultimately, it's going to just bring up two, two main ideas and go into a discussion about them. Oftentimes, with these sorts of passages, you're going to see a general bias one way or another by the author. So take note of that. A detailed passage is just one that's full of a lot of information that's hard to get through. It also is not very connected, and it's somewhat choppy at times. Personally, I find these passages to be the most difficult because it's very easy to get lost in these details. As the saying goes, don't lose the forest for the trees. There is a main idea here, and all the details are somewhat important, but it's imperative that you figure out which ones are important and why they've been written so. A new concept passage is one that introduces an unfamiliar idea. Usually it's going to be legal, ethical, or sometimes economic. This is going to be a proposition by the author regarding some sort of discipline and introducing the pros and cons of a specific idea. Usually you can categorize it with an ideal. For example, laissez-faire, medical ethics, socialism, capitalism, etc., etc. In these new concept passages, you're oftentimes going to see a lot of reasoning beyond the text and within the text, and you're going to be asked to make a lot of inferences, so be prepared for that. Lastly, there's the point of view passage. For these, the author is going to have a very strong agenda, and they're going to try to persuade you, the reader, one way or another. These will usually be somewhat argumentative and emotional, and sometimes they might be a little shaky when it comes to the details and the evidence of their arguments. You as a reader are going to be asked to assess the author's viewpoint and argument, and again, this is where active reading comes into play. What are the strengths and weaknesses of this argument? And do you agree with it? These are things that you're going to have to ask. A very popular type of point of view argument that you're going to see on the MCAT is going to be a bait and switch. This is when the author writes initially to support a specific point of view, only to later criticize it and break it down. Generally, this is going to end with an adjusted point of view or a full switch complete entirely. You want to take note of when this transition occurs. When it comes time to make inferences or to answer questions based on what you think the author's opinion is, these sorts of bait and switches are going to be very confusing if you don't understand what's going on. So we've gone into passage types and how to approach these passages. 
Now let's go into how to answer these questions in particular. We'll start with the questions breakdown. Below is a breakdown of the questions and the types of questions you will see on the MCAT. As you can see, extrapolation-based questions are the most popular. So it's very important that you have a good idea of the author's opinion and main idea for those. When it comes time to approach the questions, you want to try to identify which one looks like a correct answer. Usually there's going to be some sort of softener, something that's somewhat neutral, and it's going to avoid extremes. Softeners can be most likely, usually, generally, seemed, has a tendency to, etc. It's not going to be extremes, such as always, never, and etc. These sorts of extremes are oftentimes going to be distortions of the author's general opinion, which is probably a lot more mild than you think. Be mindful of that. Another thing you want to take note of is the questions and answers. You want to simplify them if you can. Restating them in an easier way is going to be helpful when it comes time to answer them. This is because the MCAT generally likes to word questions and answer choices in a very convoluted fashion with things such as double negatives. It's going to be important that you rewrite these things, taking out the extraneous or difficult vocab and writing them in a more easy to understand fashion. You do want to be mindful of time though. You're not going to be able to rewrite everything, but if it's, if it's exceedingly difficult to understand, I would strongly suggest you rewrite it or try to restate it. There are three core question types, and this is based on the 30, 30, 40 breakdown that we saw. The comprehension-based types are called Foundations of Comprehensions by the AMCAS. These questions are going to be asking you if you comprehend or understand the passage itself. It's going to ask you questions about the main idea, details, the function of each sentence or word, and definitions in the context of the passage. Reasoning with in-text are inference-based questions, which is also going to be that 30% category. Inferences, if you remember, are, are conclusions, pseudo-conclusions, reached from assumptions or from the passage itself that are not explicitly stated or supported. You're oftentimes going to be asked to strengthen or weaken arguments within the text. Lastly, reasoning beyond the text are going to be the extrapolation-based questions. These are going to constitute 40% of the questions you'll see. You're going to be asked to apply the opinions and the ideas presented in the passages outside of the passage. Usually what's going to happen is they're going to propose a new idea or introduce a different concept that's not explicitly stated in the passage and it's going to ask you for the author's opinion or how these new ideas affect the argument of the author's passage. Here are a couple wrong answer pathologies. Oftentimes, wrong answers are going to fall into these four categories. There are faulty use of details, opposites, out of scopes, and distortions. Faulty use of detail, it's tempting because it shows infor has recognizable information from the passage, but it's presented in an incorrect way. Opposites look a lot like the good answer, however, it's opi the opinion stated or the stance taken is not going to be in line with what the author believes. Out of scope is where your outside biases are going to come into play. These are generally going to be within the overall topic of the passage, but it's going to present content that's not stated within the passage itself. Nor is the question going to have any sort of inference asked upon you. And lastly, a distortion. This is when the author's intent or opinion is manipulated incorrectly. This is usually going to look correct, except for a word or phrase. This is oftentimes where extremes are going to come into play. For example, if the author says that he doesn't like fruits, a distortion would be if an answer choice said that the author hates fruits. The author does not hate fruits. He simply states that he doesn't like it. So that's a little bit too extreme than what the author has stated. These four types of pathologies are going to be why answer choices aren't correct. As you're going through Carr's passages and answering them in your practice, I would strongly encourage you to take time after every single practice session to look through every question and answer and try to support every correct answer and refute the three wrong ones. This is going to get you into the habit of thinking as the test takers do when they design these sorts of tests. Alright, so we'll finish our discussion of Carr's there. This is one-fourth of your MCAT, so I would strongly encourage you to devote the time and effort necessary to practice and to study this material. I know it's really hard to study this material because there's no real content per se, but, but understanding how this section works and what to do is going to help you when it comes time to take the test itself. 
please join us in the next lectures as we go into the other content that you will find on the MCAT.